as we celebrate the great mystery of the Trinity. Trinity Sunday is when we recognize that God comes to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three, but yet one, one, but yet three. It is indeed a great uh, mystery that we have and that we celebrate. Also, I'd like to, to inform you that uh, we are continuing our broadcast um, of these services, and we'll do so even as we contemplate a gradual opening of uh, our services so that uh, more people can attend corporate worship. Church Council will meet tomorrow evening, and we'll determine uh, how we can do that in a way that is measured and safe. This is the first Sunday in the month of June, and normally during this time, we recognize those who have graduated uh, from their studies. Um, and so we are going to lift up uh, those who unfortunately were not able to attend commitment services, but did successfully graduate, or will graduate in August. Uh, Carly Graham graduated from North Allegheny and will be attending the University of Pittsburgh. Zach Andrukovich graduated from North Allegheny and will be attending Penn State. And Megan Schilt graduated from North Hills High School and will be attending uh, Indiana University of Pennsylvania in the fall. Jeremiah Pulaski will graduate in August from Slippery Rock University. Tyler Royce graduates in August from the University of Pittsburgh with a degree in mechanical engineer. Uh, let me go back, Jeremiah graduates with a degree in safety management. Jason Earl graduated from the University of Pittsburgh with a degree in English, writing, and communications and a minor in theater arts. Trinity Spark, uh, graduated from the University of Massachusetts of Amherst with a degree in art therapy. Those who successfully completed their master's or graduate studies uh, were uh, Abby Lee, who received her master's in education from Clarion College, and Shayla Rice received her master's from the University of Pittsburgh in speech therapy. Uh, so, with that in mind, uh, Fran Halley is going to not give a commencement speech, speech but also read a poem uh, by, written by Dr. Seuss, All the Places You'll Go. And as she told me right before the, the filming of the service, that uh, it was his last poem before he passed. Congratulations! Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You are on your own, and you know what you know. And you are the guy who will decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some you may say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not-so-good street. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. Out there, things can happen, and frequently do, to people as brainy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along. You'll start happening too. Oh, the places you'll go. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't because sometimes you won't. 
I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. You can get all hung up in a prickly perch. Your gang will fly on. You'll be left in a lurch. You'll come down from the lurch with an unpleasant bump. The chances are then that you'll be in a slump. And where, when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun. Unslumping yourself isn't easily done. You'll come to a place where the streets are not marked. Some windows are lighted, but mostly they're dark. A place you can sprain both your elbow and chin. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right? Or right and three quarters, or maybe not quite? Or go around back and sneak in from behind? Simple it's not, I'm afraid you will find, for a mind maker-upper to make up his mind. You can get so confused that you'll start it to race down long wiggled roads at a breakneck pace, and grind on for miles across weirdish wild space, headed, I fear, for a most useless place, the waiting place, for people just waiting. Waiting for a train to go, or a bus to come, or a plane to go, or the mail to come, or the rain to go, or the phone to ring, or the snow to snow. Or waiting around for a yes or no, or waiting for their hair to grow. Everyone is just waiting. Waiting for the fish to bite, waiting for wind to fly a kite, or waiting around for Friday night, or waiting perhaps for their Uncle Jake for a pot to boil for a better break, or a string of pearls, or a pair of pants, or a wig with pearls for another chance. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where boom bands are playing. With banner flip flapping, once more you'll ride high, ready for anything under the sky, ready because you're that kind of a guy. Oh, the places you'll go. There is fun to be done. There are points to be scored. There are games to be won. And the magical things you can do with that ball will make you the winningest winner of all. Fame. You'll be famous as famous can be with the whole wide world watching you win on TV. Except when they don't. Because sometimes they won't. I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. Games you can't win because you'll play against you. All alone, whether you like it or not, alone will be something you'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. There are some down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much you won't want to go on. But on you will go, though the weather be foul. On you will go, though your enemies prowl. On you will go, though the hack and cracks howl. Onward up many a frightening creek, though your arms may be sore and your sneaker may leak. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far, and face up to your problems, whatever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact. And remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft. And never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 quarters percent guarantee. Kid, you'll move mountains. So be your name Foxbaum or Bixby or Bray, or Mordecai Alley than Alan O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. God the Creator, God the Wonderful Word, and God the Life-Giving Spirit formed the earth and all its inhabitants. God sees that all this created work is good, 
and then rests on the seventh day. The first reading is from the first and second chapters of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And every beast of the earth, and every bird of the air, and everything that creeps on the earth, everything 
that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because of it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies, the signs of the divinity. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. Why are your mortals that you should be mindful of them? Human beings that you should care for them. Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field. Birds of the air, fish of the sea, whatever grasses along the grass of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Paul closes a challenging letter to the Corinthians with an appeal to Christian fellowship grounded in the triune harmony of Christ's grace, God's love, and the Spirit's partnership. The second reading is from the 13th chapter of 2 Corinthians. All right. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
We were to keep things simple, not too complex, and not bounce from topic to topic to topic, as sometimes sermons do, but rather to keep it simple and understandable. But how do you do that on Trinity Sunday? How do you do that when we share that God is one, but comes to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? The Trinity is a tremendous mystery. We can't explain it. We can only try to celebrate God's presence as Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God who created us. God who reconciles us. And God who leads us. It is complex, but life is complex. Life is very complex. And we see that even in nature. In the 1700s, Carl Linnaeus came up with a system where he could catalog all different plant life and animal life. And so, you know, um, he would have different categories for plants and a different kingdom for animals. And with the animal kingdom, there were reptiles and there were amphibians and there were mammals. And then he would come up with something like a platypus. A platypus that has a bill like a duck, a platypus that has hair like a mammal, a platypus that does not give birth to his young life, but hatches them with an egg. Duck fit into that category. So if life is that complex, and God created life, certainly we should have no problems believing that he is too complex for us even to realize how God comes to us one in three and three in one. But I want to say this. I think this is an important message for this day. In the celebration of the Trinity, we don't necessarily celebrate the math, but it's all about the relationship. God is a perfect unity within himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And He calls us to live in unity with Him and also in unity with one another. And that definitely is a message that we need to hear today. To practice, as Paul says, the ministry of reconciliation and healing in the world. Trinity is in perfect relationship, each person to the other. How can we improve our relationships? You know, all relationships take work. All relationships take commitment and forgiveness. And how can we be agents in this world of hurt and brokenness to help find out the spirit of the world and also in our land. Jesus knew this quite well when he entered into our broken world. He knew about violence. He knew about fear and hatred and the worst that humanity had to offer. And yet, God was in him, coming down to this world to bring about healing and reconciliation. And then God also led the disciples to be agents of healing and reconciliation as well. That ministry has been given to us. It has been given to us by our Father who created us, by Jesus the Son who redeems us, and also by the Spirit of God who leads us. We are baptized in that name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we bear that image to the world. Let us be of good courage. Let us speak for truth and peace and healing among all people, within our families, within our friendships, within our community, within our congregation, within our country, and throughout the world. Amen.